when you're faced with this adoration and this love, mm -hmm. but you're not quite sure what love is. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's big. What we're touching on is big right now. This is big. Hey YouTube, it's Tim here. And today's video, I wanna do something a little bit different. I know the channel's called Tim's Gym, but my intention of that is that the gym isn't just a physical place that you go to work out at. That the gym is, you know, a mental, physical, emotional, spiritual place as well. It can be each of those. And so for me, this is gonna be more of a video about the soul gym. And there's something that stirred my heart recently. And if I can be led to make content by what's in my heart, then I'm probably gonna be doing the best service I can for those that it resonates with. Within the online manosphere kind of YouTube, social media space, there are a lot of what people may deem as male role models who a lot of boys and other men look up to and for me, as my journey of somewhat level of growth and development is recognizing that often what we are societally taught is a like good masculine trait actually can be quite negative and harsh and unloving. And so within this space, and I don't want to name names, but I see a lot of arrogance and anger and loudness and brashness and bravado and posturing and all things I can recognize in myself as well. But things that I don't think are necessarily good or loving qualities that that we should be supporting. Now, I recently saw this clip of Justin Bieber on stage. I'm tired of religion. I'm tired of division. You know. I just want to know what it looks like to love people. You know. I want to. I want to know. Now, from that clip, it spurred me to do a little more digging, and I found this interview with Justin Bieber. And I'm a bit late to the party. It's four years old, but it's an interview he did with Zane Lowe, and there was just some really profound touching moments in it that I wanted to share and talk about. It was hard for me being that young and being in the industry and not knowing where to turn and everyone, you know, telling me they love me and, you know, just turn their back on you in a second. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's hard because I want her to know that, you know, she can count on me, but at the end of the day, I don't want to, I'm never going to force myself to be in relationship with her. It has to be natural, right? So I just kind of, you know, let her do her thing. And if she ever needs me, I'm going to be here for her. But, um, but yeah, just protecting those moments because people take for granted uh, encounters. And um, <sighs> yeah, so um, yeah. Now, what I love about this clip, obviously, I have no idea what Justin's gone through, and I I feel for the kid because I can't imagine the, the life he's had. But he's not forcing himself to look strong or like posturing up. He's surrendering to his feelings and allowing himself to express that on camera for millions of people to see. And I think that takes a lot of courage, you know? Can you imagine being Justin? I don't think any of us can. Like, I know we could talk about money and fame and a lot of us many of us may desire that and a part of me probably still desires that i think it does but the amount of problems we see celebrities have and someone in justin's position who really when you look at him at the start he was just a kid that loved music you know now the crab shoot that he fell into because of that i cannot imagine the dance he's had to do to come out of this and you can see how easily it would lead him and how it's led other young celebrity superstars to drugs and alcohol and other things. There was a time where I was sipping lean, I was popping pills, I was doing molly, um, you know, shrooms, everything. And it was just an escape for me. There you go, the path out of the confusion and the pain and the navigating the lies. Like you said earlier, all the people telling him they love him and then just using him. It must have been such a confusing time. And so it's not a surprise when you have these substances that can numb you to the pain and the confusion and can make you feel temporarily better. But ultimately, it's a dead-end road that just takes more than it gives. And ultimately, it all comes from a lack of love of self, a lack of love in your environment for you, like true love, and then a lack of love of self that leads us to make those decisions, which leads us to my favorite part in the interview when Zane Lowe says this. Getting back to your family, mm. which is 
where it all begins. Mm. We start our journey somewhere with some people, <laughs> right? And we don't ask for that. Mm-hmm. They're doing the best they can, mm-hmm. and you have to process that information and move forward. And when you're faced with this adoration and this love, mm-hmm. but you're not quite sure what love is. Mm-hmm. There you go. It's big. What we're touching on is big right now. This is big. It's big. This is big. It's big. I don't even think people know how big this is. Yeah, what is what is love? Such a big question. Such a big question. Justin gets it. I can tell Justin gets it. Maybe you get it. Maybe you've had that realization too. I've never seen another celebrity respond to that conversation around that like that. Like he gets how big a question that is. Like, do we get that after all that's going on in the world right now? At any point in time, but now as much as ever. If we want to talk about, obviously, Palestine as the main thing. Russia, Ukraine, Yemen, wherever you want to talk about Taiwan. I don't want to miss someone out, but just how big a conversation that is all stemming from. A lack of love. Like Love is a word we use every single day. And the highest thing we kind of chase is love. Our, you know, our version of what we believe love is. The best things in a life that we've ever felt have all involved love. The worst things in a life and in the world have all involved a lack of love. And yet, who really understands it or is asking a question with that much commitment to want to know? Like, Justin wants to know the answer and he's seeking for the answer. And I believe when you do truly seek with your heart, and it feels to me that he is and has been, then answers will come to you. But it's not up here. It's a, it's a feeling. It's a heartfelt desire. For me, the the best single best use of YouTube is a series called "An Education in Love" by Divine Truth. And a big part of understanding love is to understand what drives us to be unloving. Because I feel like love is a natural state within us, or to be loving, or to be happy as a part of that is a natural state as we can see in children and there's a slow if you watch children over time there's a slow dampening to their spirit that happens I felt it I went through it myself you probably went through it yourself if you picture yourself as a younger kid you might have memories of moments of when you were just happy for no reason you were just happy life was just good without any specific thing and so there's this slow dampening so what is in me that's blocking that so it's all the unloving things I'm holding on to and my daily actions that are that are creating this around me. And a huge part of that, it's starting to be clear to me, is an avoidance of my emotional pain, avoidance of my fear, and avoidance of my griefs. Now in part two of the series of An Education in Love, Divine Truth, break it down, starting in the reversal process, rather than just looking at, you know, where we're being loving in our life. That's okay, it's how we need to focus on dealing where we're being unloving. In part two, they really break it down in a really clear sequential order that just speaks of it to me and I just wanted to share the order that it goes in and they start with the creation of my pain because then when we understand the creation of our pain we can start the reversal process after that is the creation of the facade because it's our pain that drives us to be fake and have a facade or what a lot of the mainstream would call an ego these days a facade feels like a more accurate word to me so the pain creates us to have this facade this persona that we present to society to different environments, to our partner, to our family, to our friendship group. We create these different facades for different people to avoid our discomforts and our pains. Now, to remove the facade, we have to accept the facade. And because we can't, if we're judging the facade, we just create it to be and we have, you know, it's, it's like the kid that's just being attacked by the parent all the time, they're just gonna shrink and shrink. So if we can have compassion for our own facades and our own egos, whatever you wanna call it, and that's when the deconstruction of the facade can begin when we accept it once we start to deconstruct the facade through an emotional process of deconstruction which it's clear to me that Justin's kind of in an emotional process of that then we get to the pain that's driving the facade and in theory what they teach is that then the creation of our real self can start to come into more full view of our lives in our real self we can be and develop our loving self I just feel like at the core, I fight every day temptation and things that, you know, are instinctive to do, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, 
lie, be greedy, all these things that just naturally come. Those naturally come. I got to fight to not be that. Uh, maybe that's my unique thing. Maybe that's me personally being that way. And I, I just accept that. And I just know that that's not who I am. Mm-mm. I think that takes courage and a certain level of humility to admit how unloving we desire to be day to day and that it is a daily struggle. And I think we can all relate to that a little bit. Because humanity's, you know, it's it's come to a place of being really, you know, it's it's broken. I mean, it's just just look around. I mean, the pain that's, um, it's just so much pain, and uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know where I was going with that. But, um, you know, I am. I, um, hey, baby. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Oh, look at that. Um. Oh, <laughs> such a sweet ending. And just, and just seeing Justin there, almost like a little boy, it's really like for me that's impressive like i know as a man how much societally pressure there is to shut down my fear and my vulnerability and allow myself to express myself that way and to see him in this place it's like to me that's the direction us men need to head like straight up not more strength of our idea of strength, right? Physical strength and income and and protect the family. But this meekness, it's that's more courageous. That's emotionally courageous to me. And so it's really special to see and then really sweet to see Haley come in with the drink at the end. So, I mean, the pain in this world, it's just so, it's like, it's obvious. And uh, people are looking for hope and they're looking for a way out, and they're looking for an escape, and they're looking for um, they're looking for truth, and they're looking for. Um... Amen. We are certainly looking for truth because there's a lot of lies out there. One thing Justin talks openly, which you might have gathered from some of this, or if you watched anything else about him, is is he talks a lot about his Christianity and his faith in God, and talks about God's love and how that has been a big factor on him actually having some kind of solid ground to stand on in his life I think helped him to accept the pain that he's actually in and to be this open and vulnerable because he's got that kind of foundation in him which I just think is very inspiring personally I don't consider myself a Christian by modern day kind of standards but I do believe that there is a creator a higher power a most high being that we can have each have a personal relationship with but I don't believe that we need any religion or any other figure or person to go to to have that relationship. I was thinking too, it's not obviously, you know, when we want to be successful in certain things, there's things we have to work hard at, but like striving for God's love or God's approval or people's approval, it's like God's told me, he said, I mean, I don't hear from God audibly, but um, I feel like God's, you know, when he sees us, he... He's not this God that people, a lot of people think that it's like judgmental and he's a God that uh, that accepts us for who we are and loves us through our, our pain and through our, our dirt. What I just thought was so precious and poignant in that clip is what Justin shares that realizing that recognition, that acceptance in your heart that that he is loved that we are all loved <laughs> despite all of our flaws and dirt and you know problems that that we carry with us our, our sinful desires whatever you want to call it whatever word you will allow that despite all that to still feel loved like that's that's something <laughs> that's really special and precious and i kind of maybe you've experienced that the contrast of that feeling to societally to 
my own relationship with my own family growing up where love was so conditional that I'm a lot of my life has been striving to earn love you know to earn approval in some way and when you finally feel that feeling and, and come to the acknowledgement that you don't have to earn it it's a very special moment and it really changes your life from that moment on and so to see Justin share that I can and it can have some sense of what he's been through and it's really beautiful so that was basically it I just wanted to share my appreciation and shed some light on what I feel is a more positive representation of a male in society today and I'm not saying I think Justin's got it all figured out or should we, we should go and copy him by any means but just that I think he's asking far more important and poignant questions than most of the male influencers well at least in the sphere that I kind of see are asking and that he has a certain humility and surrender and softness to him to those questions which allows him to deal with and work through some of his pain and that's kind of what it is it's a reversal that I am starting to go through that I think many men in the western world or in the first world at least are gonna have to go through this reversal through our own pain and it is gonna be a reversal out of this bravado postured up man through the pain that Justin's kind of on his way through to becoming more loving men in society. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to share because I think it can be helpful to see and recognize and acknowledge that is a step that we may need to go through. Saving the best for last then, there's some clips of Justin when he's singing praise and worship and there's just something that hits different about him when he sings with this intention than when he's singing pop. Can't quite identify why, but there's just something really special and it touched me. I never thought I'd make a video about Justin Bieber, but here we are, 2024, who'd have thought it? Love you, brother. Thank you for your sharing and your openness and vulnerability. Enjoy this last song. Thank you.